With me now, bring on board Sunil Subramanian, Managing Director and CEO with uh, Sundaram Mutual Fund. Sunil, fantastic to have you back and thank you for joining us. Uh, increasing, increasingly, markets are getting a shock on a daily basis. Mm. First, it was this entire view from SBI and Namura that GDP will slip below 5%. Then came the high print on inflation. Then came admission by auto companies that, look, there is a problem in the festival, euphoric sales have gone away. So my point to you, Sunil, is that whereas markets are sitting at an all-time high, do you think somewhere markets are ignoring all the landmines? I mean, we thought slowdown was behind us, but fresh landmines have been discovered. Yes, but uh, I think one thing you got to uh, remember, Nico, is that the markets had corrected, especially you mentioned auto and in a big, big time. What you're seeing now is just a setting right of that. So if you're asking me, is the market saying the GDP is going to bounce back and hence rising? Not at all. What the market is seeing is that there are grown shoots and they are overcorrected in the run-up. Because India from one 7%, 8% economy, suddenly they are coming to terms with 6, 5. Everybody overcorrected in the market and the budget didn't help in terms of the taxation. So I think the, what the market is just resetting that. It's just a reversion to mean. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at forward P's today, I wouldn't say they are overvalued. They are at the decent levels. If you see FI 21, large caps are around 16-ish and mid and small caps are at 13-ish. So definitely market is not in a euphoric or overbought territory. I'm just saying that oversold is getting corrected, one. Mm. Second is, you mentioned about the fact that there are green shoots available across the board. While they may not be sure bounce back, you saw today auto numbers. The private vehicle registration year on year, October 11% up. Right. You're always so optimistic, uh, yes. Sunil. You know, <laughs> and I know you are, but mm. I can't help but wonder because... You know, it's it's brief and it's like a blip. It's not a sustained trend that we're seeing in auto. Or we've had a Britannia talk this morning talking about how they see a prolonged recovery. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I know you're seeing green shoots, but mm. again, take us through why the conviction, because sometimes the numbers are not adding up. Yeah, see, I think what happens with the with people, with analysts, and uh, there are two types of analysts, right? One who studies the market, one actually invests. Mm. Mm. Okay, <laughs> because... When you're analyzing something and trying to project, right, you're always hard facts owned. When you're actually investing, right, you have to take a call on two things. Mm. One is that nobody ever caught a bottom, bottom right, nobody ever sold off at the top right. right. Second is the fact is that market is trading information. Mm. So when you're hundreds and thousands of analysts studying it and each gets a glimpse of the future, everybody is buying three years down the road. Because nobody is making investment for three months. Oh. Now, let's say that you're assuming GDP may cross, go below four, like SBI's economist is saying. So what? All it means is that for that near term, maybe there is going to be a correction. It doesn't mean that fundamentally yeah. India is resetting to a 4% GDP economy. So I think this information that comes out, yes, there is a slowdown. Yes, there is a chance that GDP could go short term below five. But that shouldn't be driving your investment decisions. Because ultimately, what are you betting on you are betting on the fact that a huge liquidity surge today 65 percent of world uh, debt advanced country debt is a negative yielding oh, territory sure. you have liquidity fed is pumping 60 billion dollars a month you ecb is pumping money when you have the surge of liquidity and you can't go into debt and there's a limit to how much gold can take equities is a natural flow so i think the balance between growth versus valuations is always a play india 8000 crores of sfp is still coming in month on month equity has added 3 lakh new customers you're talking about this why are 3 lakh new people putting money into equities mm -hmm. in this month so the surge of liquidity is going to make sure that the market is waiting for a chance to look at some green shoots to rush in to buy. So I think, and when you are a fund manager investing, what are you trying to do? You are in a sense also guessing what the other participants are doing. Sure. Right? You can't, <laughs> so you can't just yeah. stand in isolation. This is my GDP view. It will take 18 months for this to recover. So I'll wait. No. Sunil, so then so, why, why, if markets are always right, if markets are forward looking, hmm. why do we have bear markets and bull markets? The reason we have bear markets and bull markets is because of the greater fool theory. Hmm. Is because when you buy, right, the, always the option is, is there a greater fool waiting there to buy? Mm -hmm. That's why you see when momentum goes up, it goes up and up. And when it goes down, when you lose confidence that there's a fool right there willing to buy what you sell is when the bad face comes in. So I would say it's essentially the fear and greed play, which is what the greater fool theory is all about, at play, at, at, at emotions. And that's why a person who has a long-term view of an underlying economic trend, mm. right, will always be the winner. Okay. Okay. So domestic investors are still 
you know, Bye. buying. We've got foreign queues, foreign flows intact as okay. well. But okay. we're still waiting for triggers from the government for some inflection point. Mm. What if that doesn't come? So let's look at it. What trigger and from the government do you want? Do you want any, you, are you questioning the government's sincerity towards economic reforms? I don't think today you can say that. Yes, in the initial period of they came to power, they were more politically oriented in terms of tough decisions. Yeah. They are serious about it. What they are clear is that they will not do any industry specific actions mm. and they will not do any short term uh, revenue oriented consumption ticker events. Market would be very happy to see those happen. Oh. Uh, direct income tax cut, uh, LTCG cut, yeah. anything. But look at it from this way. A capital revenue multiplier is something like four times a revenue multiplier and lasts for four to five years longer. So I am very supportive of the fact that the government is focusing only on the supply side only on the capex spending side and but that's a slow longer process to bed but that's better because that's what is more sustainable of a gdp revival mm. rather than uh, doing short term you know they could have easily increased narega by double mm. pumped money into rural india mm. would have flowed into consumption you would have seen a good ticker they stayed away from that short term uh, populist decisions which would have easily given a bump up to everything mm. and markets would have been also happy with that but what they are doing is the right things. They are making India a more FDI inviting country. We have been getting consistently FDI growth, if you see. But the FDI is not the right kind of FDI. It's more coming into your digital startups, your swiggies and the thing. What you need is manufacturing FDI. And the tax cut was one significant. Ease of doing business improvement is another one. You need land reforms. You need labor reforms, for which parliamentary majority will hope through. So I feel that the government has got its brains and actions in the right point that not going after short-term pop-ups, but to do fundamental things. And what is the biggest reason for this? And it's staring in the eye. It is a statistic that just recently saw. In the 2017 to 27 10-year period, China is going to lose 21 million people from their workforce. Oh. India is adding 117 million in that period. Why I'm saying this is we are adding six times time China is going to lose. But look at it the other way. Mm. If the government doesn't deliver jobs for these 117 million say, people, yeah. we are going to have a civil war exactly. on our hands. Yeah. So the neck is they got a knife against it. Mm. So this government, so why all this tax cuts and FDI yeah. uh, promotion? Because job creation, the only way jobs can get created is if world majors come and set up manufacturing shops in India. And today you saw Samsung is talking about moving production to India. Mm -hmm. Apple has already done a decisive move. About $755 million worth of business has already come from China manufacturing to India. Mm -hmm. It's a drop in the ocean because China has lost $45 billion, of which about 12, 13 is permanent loss right. due to tariff. Another 30, 35 has gone to all the other countries in the world. We've got less than a billion. So the potential for us with the kind of labor yeah. force we have both in supply of labor and in the cost of labor. Just look at it this way. China's per capita income is $10,000. India's is $2,000. If somebody has to screw the back of an iPhone onto the iPhone, if it's going to cost $50 per hour in China, it's going to cost $10 a year. So I'm just saying is that, but everything is not hunky-dory. These are all the building blocks sure. which need to be implemented. And I think the government is aware and what they are doing is all these long-term mm. things to make that thing facilitate. So to me, all of these are the real reason you should be buying equities. I want to look at Reliance 12 rupees away from becoming a trillion dollar, a 10 lakh color company. I beg your pardon, trillion dollar. I hope it happens one day. But right now, it's on course to become a 10 lakh crore market That's cap. That's 10 trillion company. rupees. I mean, I would talk about dollars. Trillion. Yes. That's the mantra. Of so thank you for telling me. We are in India. We always reminded ourselves to count in dollars. I mean, the only, only trillion dollar company in the world are two. Yes. Microsoft and Apple. I think Microsoft is still there. Apple yes. has come down. That's what I understand. Correct. Which one will be the next trillion dollar company in dollar terms of India? From India? Yeah. Ten times more in 20 years. Um, well, in one of the banks, HDFC Bank probably. Okay. Because I think that the trend... Not TCS, not Reliance? No. Wow. TCS cannot be that. No, I should think no. about it. It's a I mean, services company. Know. Reliance is already there. Reliance is already there. But I think that if you look at the whole way... The, whatever I talked about, the GDP growth, whether a consumption revival, ultimately, in the except the US, if you take all of the markets, the top five banks account for 90% of the market share of those countries. India, we're at 35%. So I'm saying that the big banks are going to get bigger. The bank government is also pushing to push the consolidation. Mm. And hence, to me, that 
in india a growing developing country needs financing and i think that the the bank which is really yeah. well capitalized and well thing is going to grab market share and that's the, hdfc bank I mean, uh, you don't own HDFC Bank in your portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we do, we do. Not in. Not the... like a core portfolio. You're bullish, but you don't want to try. No, no. See, that's because of the fund-specific uh, attributes. But you, you know, uh, uh, the the reason I'm saying is that it, see, I uh, for example, if you look at it, right, if really for scale, at one day, a merger between HDFC and HDFC Bank can't be ruled out according to me. Yeah. yeah. So when I say that, of course, I'm also looking because if they want to be global scale. and raise money at global rates which today you can raise in negative yielding rates right they've got to get scale we all think here ha huh, it's already very big but just think of what a merger like that could achieve i mean i'm just dreaming here but i'm just saying if you ask me banking because see what's happened is sadly because of the way the nbfc crisis got handled and the way psc banks are in a mess unfortunately there's no competition for well run private sector banks in india today PSC banks don't, you know, and it, it all this them. transmission talk. I don't believe will happen. It will only be talk. If on ten basis points, you already know. You know why? Because when can transmission happen? When there's too much money chasing the yeah. borrowers. So the point is that is neither PSC banks. You know, even today, I think I don't want to name the bank. It came out the fresh NPA <laughs> correction today. A PSC bank has come with, and as they do the merger. the guy who's the actually the big bank in the merger is going to go and clean up all the other bank sheets and say ki ye sab you know all these things are lying in the wood of worms in the woodwork and take it out and nbfc crisis the biggest financier of nbfc was my own industry yeah. right what happened we took all the liquid institutional money and gave it a short term we are all wiser by the day now we're not going to do that the asset liability mismatch is not going to be supported by this industry So who is going to finance a three-year, five-year loan yeah. to a housing finance company? There, a few big ones again mm, will get the money, see. but the mass. So, but then who is going to fill this lending space? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be the big private banks, which are well capitalized, which have networks. There are quite a few in India, but I, I, I am a believer that that's the big, big play, okay. which will. Uh, <laughs> which is a safe bet in accord okay yeah. and <clears throat> appreciate your time and thank you for being Thanks. frank and thank you for being honest on you know where the next opportunity in the market is